Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go to an article titled, Why Your Body Count Should Never Matter. And a big shout out to David for sending me this article. And guys, this article is written by a gal. At, uh, upon looking into this, she is in college. So guessing, obviously, early 20s. Working on, I guess, her working on things where she graduates. And she's writing this whole article giving men advice, lecturing guys, that a gal's body count shouldn't matter. And therefore, if you're with her, that's in her past. And therefore, you shouldn't judge her on what she did in the past. And she is a person and deserves... You get the point. And I thought it'd be a very interesting one to go over here because I got to tell you, I have done, I have covered more and more stories lately for my two other channels. They did what and SSM clips about gals that are having meltdowns because their boyfriends or fiancés eventually find out about their past, who they were completely lying about, and they dump them. And they're losing their minds because it's not fair and a guy shouldn't judge and all that crap. And this is what we're getting more and more. Because we've been in an era now, as I call Sam Gamor 2.0, which I think is pretty warranted at this point, where thanks to the feminist movement telling gals that in the sexual revolution that gals can be just like guys, it's gone to a whole new level. And yes, you got a certain percentage of guys out there that can hook up with every girl that crosses their path, but most guys are not like that. And But it's easy for a, just an average gal to get a lot of dudes. And as it turns out, guess what? Guys don't want to have a, get serious with a girlfriend, let alone a potential marriage partner, who's hooked up with 150 dudes, or 100 dudes, or 50 dudes, or used to get partake in three somethings, or engage in spicy act, acts in the bedroom that she wouldn't give her husband or fiance, and they break up with them. I did like four of them this past week, and she's lecturing guys about this. And I gotta tell you guys, if in my opinion. Everybody's free to do what they want to do with their lives. If women want to hook up with 200 guys in college, that's their business. But there are consequences to actions. And guys are have, allowed to have the choice that if they don't want to be, date you or marry you because of that. That's their choice too. We all have our choice. And we're not insecure or controlling or misogynistic or blah, 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 those popular buzzwords for doing so. And I thought this is good to, to show you guys because there's going to be more and more of this. Okay? And I got to tell you also, I'm going to get into this in a moment. There was a time and place I used to think that, uh, hey, you know, guys hook up with a lot of women, cool, all that. But as I've gotten older and matured, I think it's honestly kind of stupid. Because how much time is a guy spending if he's juggling four or five gals in a rotation? How much time is he spending on those girls when he could be making something of himself in this world? Building his business, starting something, moving up in his career, whatever. Or how much money is he spending on these gals? Or risk getting an STD or a gal pregnant? So the biggest thing is that if, if guys can do it, then the women can do it. Well, I think it's kind of stupid, honestly, at this point in my life, but I've gotten older and wiser. Amongst many other things. So I'm going to go through this here, guys. And you'll get a nice laugh about this, about her lecturing guys. And I'll say more as I get into this. So it starts off, says here, uh, again, the title is, Why Your Body Count Should Never Matter. She says, I don't know about you, but there have been countless times I've been asked or told things relating to my body count. On the count of three, let's both say our body count. She says, if you have a higher body count than 10, that will make me less attracted to you. Body count is the colloquial term that the amount of people you've had SCX with. Questioning someone's body count may seem harmless, but it can be very unsettling to be asked such private information. Well, hang on here. Last time I checked, a lot of women ask guys very personal information, things that determine, you know, where the relationship will go. Is this guy marriage material, like how much money he makes, what he does for a living? And if he doesn't make a certain number, she'll turn him down. So a guy's allowed to know her number about her past, and I'll get into that more, to determine if he wants to be with her, and he has a right to. Uh, so, if you, to if you too have been asked by someone what your body count is and immediately felt uncomfortable, I'm here to tell you, you are not alone. A quick Google search didn't help me feel better. The first headline was a Reddit forum that was a justification for why men have the right to judge women on their body count. The Reddit was littered with positive, possessive and misogynistic language. I then looked at the Google generated response to the question on what is an acceptable body count for women. Question, what is an acceptable body count for women? 
And Google said to her, the average number of S-word partners in general is anywhere between four to eight. Four to eight, and good luck in this world. She says, uh, no, no, no. And by the way, guys, you can hear the pouring rain here. The, I've been filming multiple videos, and it's been on again, off again rain, but the show must go on, so I'll talk loud here. I know some of you guys like hearing the rain. Uh, average numbers are obviously supposed to be objective data. But if I was Googling this question in hopes of feeling justified for S-word pursuits, I wouldn't feel very good. The acceptable body count for a woman is literally any number. If you're practicing safe sex, you should be able to F anyone and everyone you want to. Well, let's go back to what I was saying earlier. In my opinion, you can have the freedom to do what you want, you know, with your body. Fair enough. But there are consequences to your actions. And so if, she, if she, this gal here or her best friend or whatever wants to go hook up with 200 dudes and partake in group activities and do all holes and everything else, fine. But if a guy doesn't want to date you or be a boyfriend because of that, it's his choice as you had a choice. And studies have shown the whole pair bonding thing that if a gal has relations with so many guys, she can't pair bond with future serious partner and that can ha make him have some serious issues in, in a marriage and all that. So he has a right to do this. End of freaking story. Uh, it goes on. I'm here to tell you to stop worrying about how many people you've slept with. If someone is judging you for your number, then they are probably insecure about themselves. Lady, it is not insecurity. It's just simply we know darn well that it's not going to work out in the long term in terms of the pair bonding thing. And also, frankly, a little disgusting. But what I tell you guys in the beginning about certain buzzwords popping up in this article and insecure... You all know darn well when a guy makes demands, he is labeled insecure all the time. Um... If somebody is judging you for your number, then you're probably, they're probably insecure. A sure sign that you're dating an F-boy. It's time to end the gendered and outdated debate still going today that women need to be virgin-like until they are married. And if they aren't, then they are S-L-U-T-S. While men are rewarded for the amount of partners they've conquered with a high five and a beer. Well, that is certainly not false, but... I've reached a point, like I said in the beginning, that I don't exactly think that's the smartest thing anymore. I mean, really. And I've gotten older, and I see things differently now. She says, I'm not here to say I have the answer to the question. Why can men hook up with a lot of people and be seen in a positive light? Whereas it's completely the opposite with women. We live in a patriarchal society that degrades gals from being S-word liberated. But I'm here to promote self-love and give some advice. You're going to get some advice. You are in your early 20s in college. You haven't been around very long. So anybody that says they're going to give advice, someone that's in their 20s, they're going to give advice to guys that are 50, 60 years old, have been around here two times or three times as long as you've been alive, that's pretty funny to hear. And by the way, this advice is only going to benefit you because obviously this is what you're into. By the way, guys, this article was posted on a website that sells uh, spicy products to spice up bedroom activity. So there's a little bit of a bias here. But anyhow, holy crap, listen to this rain. Anyway, uh, number one, this is her list of things. Let's stop thinking about our past S-word partners as mere numbers. Describing S-word history in terms of quantitative data and not people feeds into toxic societal cycle on inequality and objectification. Well, so she's managed to use all these different buzzwords in here, just to, like almost like she chose the buzzwords to see how she could squeeze them into this answer. Number two, our partners are extremely private. You should never have to disclose sensitive information if you don't want to. Being pressured into saying how many people you've had SEX with can feel very vulnerable. It shouldn't be thrown around like you're listing off a grocery list. Well, I disagree. Well, if you're going to get married to someone, a guy has a right to know about her past, okay, what he's getting into. Just the same way as a woman, if she's marrying a guy, has a right to know about his past on multiple fronts, including how many women he is with, what he did with those women, etc. I got no problem with a woman knowing about a dude's past, good, bad, or ugly, but the guy should know. And he's not insecure or insensitive or an a-hole for wanting to know. And if there are things about her past that he doesn't like and doesn't want him to involved with, then he has every right to walk away. And he's not the uh, scum of the earth or the root of all evil. And she has the right to walk away too, and she's not the root of all evil either if there are things about his past she doesn't like. 
But as you can see, articles and stories like this are popping up more and more. So the tactic is to shame guys and to how dare you break up with a gal because of this. And I've noticed with the 2,000 videos I've done here on YouTube and all these stories I go over from stories you guys send in or ones I find online, whenever a guy breaks up with a girl, you know, he's the scum of the earth. How dare he? But if a girl breaks up with a guy, well then, hey, no problem. It's ridiculous. Uh, number three, the amount of S-word partners you've had does not define you. Okay. Your self-worth should not be measured by how many people you had SEX with. It just shouldn't. Each S-word encounter differs emotionally, physically, and mentally, and does not set a threshold of measurement on how you should view yourself. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of dying to know. I'm sure you guys are wondering, how many partners has this gal had? Good Lord. It seems, this very seems very biased here. Yes, people have a lot of things that can define you, but again, if a guy wants to break up with you because of your past, he can break up with you. He has that right. Number four. People who judge you for the amount of partners you've had are probably insecure themselves. How many times have we heard insecure now? Like five times? That's the buzzword. I mean, everybody did a shot on how many times she says insecure, you'd be freaking trashed by the end of this video. No, you're not insecure for having an issue with that. It's ridiculous. She says, I hate to break it to you, but that guy you've been crushing on insults and judge you for the amount of people you just you've had or had not slept with, he's probably either jealous or extremely insecure. Whoosh. Number five. Shame has no place in S-word conversations. You should not feel shame no matter how many partners or how S-word you are. If you're being safe and using protection, there should be no reason to be ashamed of your S-word habits. We are human. We all enjoy SCX. Yeah, we enjoy it. But there's a point where you have had enough of it with enough people that it becomes like just like no big deal. And in terms of it's like whatever. And at that point then it's just kind of just... What's, what's the term? Um... I can't think of the term here, but it will come back to me later when I'm done filming this video. But the point is, it just becomes so common, it's just like whatever. And, and keeping someone really connecting and bonding with a person that they may spend the rest of their lives with. And again, guys knowing full well from the studies have shown that when a gal has so many partners, the pair bonding is long gone, and that's not a very ideal situation for eventual marriage and all that. So she says here, a long story short, Women and men are unequally treated with regard to how many people they have at SCX with. I will be the first to say that this is toxic, another buzzword, way of thinking about uh, intercourse infiltrated how I view SCX. I was concerned that my number was too high and that men wouldn't want to be involved with me because of it. Again, lady, if you wanted to do what you wanted to do, you were quite adventurous, that's your business. But if guys don't want to be involved with you because of that, that is their business and they're not the root of all evil and you're going to have to get used to that. There are consequences to your actions. End of story. And again, this comes back to the feminist movement trying to tell gals they can... You can't be a strong, empowered woman unless you hook up with 150 guys or all the guys in your high school or the whole the college football team, lacrosse team, swim team, and chess team. Although I doubt they're hooking up with a chess team. That's ridiculous. And, again, just like the gals there are posting Lord knows what on social media, flaunting their parts to get attention and likes and comments on Instagram, or going so far as OnlyFans, your past is going to come back to haunt you. But instead of dealing with consequences, it's either just to blame guys and make us out to be supervillains. Oh, if women are allowed to have standards, and we certainly know that they have a laundry list of standards for boyfriends and eventual marriage partners, Guys are allowed to have standards too. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Because we know, good Lord, the sixes. Six feet tall, six figure income, six packs, six inches or more down south, 19 master's degrees, speak seven foreign languages. You get the point. I'm exaggerating, but you get the point. It's time to destigmatize the idea that the gals who have a lot of SCX are S L U T S and women who don't have sex are, are prudes. Both are equally harmful. No person should be judged on how S-word active they are. Your body count is your body count, and you should be able to tell whoever you want and share it with absolutely no one. Uh, let's start leaving a shame and guilt and stigmas aside for S-word conversations and start teaching self-love. 
Well, you can have a lot of self-love, but it doesn't mean, you, again, you have to hook up with 300 dudes. Notice as the video goes on, my number gets higher and higher here, but you get the point. So I think uh, she's gotten herself, she's, she's been adventurous, lived in a, an adventurous life up into her early 20s here, and now probably she's getting rejected. And again, people, it's amazing to me how, you know, I was young once. In fact, I consider myself still young, even though I'm 45, but I was very young once. And sure, I always didn't, I didn't always necessarily think about the future for my actions. And I learned the hard way, as do young people now. But we live in a society more and more where nobody actually has any accountability for anything. Okay, it's amazing to me. People can be doing this, this, and this, but it's always somebody else's fault. That don't hold me accountable, but somebody else is to blame for what happens to me. And it just drives me crazy. So guys, that'd be a good one to go over here. It wasn't very long, but I always find it funny when some young person who hasn't been on this earth very long decides to lecture me or other guys out there who are two or three times their age about how we should think, how we should live, how we should make decisions, all that. That's pretty funny. And of course, this is as biased as can be. So guys, you are allowed to have standards. And if you want to date a gal or get in a relationship with a gal for whatever reason, be her history, her body count, whatever that is, don't fall for this bullshit and be shamed or anything like that because there's a whole world out there that loves to shame guys. That's the big thing. Shame, shame, shame. But notice when a guy might try the tactic of shaming, all, and you know what I'm talking about there, well, then again, we're the root of all evil. Anyway, guys, have a good rest of your Sunday. I will see you tomorrow on Monday. That is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.